Hello, everyone. Welcome to the what I'm affectionately calling the Lights Up Next Stage crossover episode. I don't know why. That's how my brain called it once and now it's stuck. So my name is Carol diaz Aristia. Usually it is Rebecca Wallace hosting, but I have affectionately, I've said the word twice already, word twice already today, hijacked the show from her. And Yvette Del Toro and I are going to be hosting tonight's episode. Becky is still here. She's moderating the chat. So if you want to say hi to her, don't worry. She's still here. So Yvette, and the reason Yvette and I have stolen the show tonight is because we both worked very closely on the Lights Up project this year. So when we talked about doing something on the next stage with Lights Up, Yvette and I knew we wanted to be a part of it. So Yvette, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everybody. It's really great to see that everyone's coming in from so many different places. Um, so hello, my name is Yvette Del Toro. Um, let's talk about Lights Up. So Lights Up is the new play festival that City Lights Theatre Company runs. We've been doing it for many, many, many years. Um, but once the pandemic hit, we decided to try moving it online. And we were like, why don't we start a podcast? And so ever since then, we decided, hey, it actually works really well on podcast format. So that is how we ended up with the Lights Up podcast. Um, and with us here today, we actually have our two directors, Sarah Yonan and Melinda Marks, as well as Rachel Bacher, who is the New Works Committee Chair, and I would love to bring them in and introduce them. Why don't we start with you, Rachel? Really quick, Rachel, for two seconds. I wanna hop on and let folks know that we do record this next stage and put it on YouTube later. Hello, people on YouTube later watching. How are you doing? <laughs> so if you wanna have your camera on, we'd love to see it, but if you wanna turn it off because you know on your face on YouTube, we get that. Please use the chat. Sorry to interrupt, Rachel. I just want to let folks know that's why we're recording things. No Take it away. problem. No problem. I am very excited to be here. And it's been a pleasure working with Yvette and Carol and everybody involved in this, and Melinda and um, Sarah and everybody involved in the Lights Up series. It, as Yvette was saying, it used to be an in person kind of thing with, um, you know, like, lots of people coming and celebrating and hanging out and eating and drinking and all that kind of stuff. But with the pandemic, we realized hmm, this could be an opportunity. And we switched it over to a virtual event, which actually gave us a lot of freedom to really try some new techniques and, and um, new format. And it's been going great. And I enjoyed working, uh, you know, looking at all the plays and reviewing them. There were so many um, amazing submissions and I uh, was really pleased with the selection that we made uh, as, the, as the finalists for what we uh, presented. And it's been a great experience. I will say we got a record breaking over 200 submissions for Lights Up this year. Yeah. I think it ended up being like 230 or 240, something like that, which is a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And we had like a lot of readers and like Carol made this amazing spreadsheet to track all of our progress. It was just like, I felt like a dinosaur, like entering like the, I don't know, the tech world. It was just, it, it went so smoothly. So it was- My husband is a data scientist. So if there was a bad spreadsheet in the house, he just wouldn't let it happen. Oh, we are so lucky. Thank you. Thank you, Carol's husband. Well, thanks, Rachel. Let's, Sarah, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, I'm Sarah Yonan. I directed episode number one um, of Lights Up this year. Um, I've been going to City Lights my whole life. My mom is Ann Yonan, the general manager. So this was very exciting for me to work on. Um, and I got to work uh, with some of my friends who just, I just graduated from Wagner College in New York, so I got to have some of them join me and kind of share the City Lights love with everyone, which was super exciting. Cool. Happy to have you. I was a voice actor in episode one with Sarah as my director, so it's great to work with you, Sarah. It was fun. Great to work with and you, now, too. <laughs> Melinda, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, so uh, my name is Melinda Marks. I directed episode two, um, I believe five uh, lights ups ago. Um, I 
uh, participated as an actor and uh, directed the last in the last live um, lights up, I believe. And then I have been uh, very happily been a director um, for the last three uh, all digital lights up since the beginning of the pandemic. And um, I, uh, I, I love it. <laughs> I love this medium and I love the I love new works. Cool. Thank you for sharing, Linda. And I'm looking out at the gallery and I mentioned um, earlier to the rest of the team that we have some of our playwrights here tonight also. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We'd love to have you introduce yourselves. Um, I guess it'd be cleaner if I just started pointing at people. So the first one near the top for me, if you'd like to introduce yourself, Russ. Hello, this is Russell. We and I'm here with my wife, Rita. We're on on the Northwest Coast, Oregon. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> I think we may have lost him. Yeah. We heard a portion of that, Russ, and hopefully we'll get, we'll get you right back. Um, but for now, let's move forward. I think the next one in my from what I can see is Guy. Hi there. Hello, uh, I'm Guy. I'm up in Ottawa, Canada. So I guess I'm making your festival an international festival. Um, and uh, thank you for selecting my play. Thank you very much. It's exciting to have people from all over the place. Uh, yeah, which, which play, did, play did you write? Uh, mine was It's Time to Come Out Now. Fantastic. I believe that thank was you. Thank you to Melinda and everyone else for bringing that uh, so beautifully to to uh, making the making the production so such a wonderful one. I was really pleased with what you did, what you did with it. Um, maybe we'll thank talk a little more about that later, but thank you. I love that script. I was just looking at it again and I could really relate <laughs> to like you know, being in isolation and then finally stepping outside and and uh, encountering, you know, the brave new world. I think so many people can relate to that for sure. That's right. Okay, let's see. Next over here, I see Ali, and Ali was actually also one of the actors in a technical sense. <laughs> so let's hear from you, Ali. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ali Costa. I uh, wrote and performed the first piece in episode two, which was called Amelia Still. Thanks for including me. Yeah, it's a great piece. It was really fun to hear you actually also um, read your own piece, <laughs> hear how you would like it to actually be performed, which is really cool. Well, thank you for the opportunity. And then let's see our next one. Uh, Alethea, is that correct? Uh, you got it. Um, I'm Alethea Sherlon Howlett, and I wrote the piece for your discretion advised for episode two. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. That's fantastic to have you all here. I think that's all the playwrights. We didn't miss anyone, did we? Raise your hand if you're a playwright and we haven't talked talk yet. <laughs> Russ, Russ is back. Yay. Maybe. Oh. I'm back. Russ, what, which play did you write? The play, I wrote the play Pippi. Pippi. Pippi was one Pippi. that I was in. <laughs> Pippi was fun. Yeah. It was just a funny play. It was. I, I want what? that software for sure. 
so I can go grocery shopping and play practical jokes on my local grocery store. That would be awesome. So where um... I'll, I'll send you the program. Awesome. Thank you. Well, if you have any questions for our directors, our playwrights about plays specifically, please put them in the chat, raise your hand. But until then, Yvette and I have a, a few, a list of questions, if you will, that I'm actually excited about. So the first one I have written down is for our director, Sarah and Melinda. And my question is that I know that you've both directed on a stage before. So what is the difference between directing on a stage and directing for an audio play? Because those seem like two very different things. So how do you approach that? And what's the difference between the two? And what are the similarities? I can Whoever go, wants first. To go first. I'll go first. Yeah. Um, this was a very daunting project for me because there was no like staging or anything. It was just purely audio um because i am a very visual person just in general so getting to work with the actors and also trying to avoid giving like line readings away the ways that i wanted things to be said was something that i had to work around um but honestly like getting to do a lot of the rehearsals like in my pajamas was like not a bad experience <laughs> and also because it was all virtual i was like i said before able to work with people from everywhere i mean like even though i had my friends that were able to do it with me like that are from the east coast carol was also able to be in it and she's in texas so like that was really exciting to be able to do as well and something that i really enjoyed um and yeah it made it a lot more comfortable to have like people that i know able to work with me as well on this like new new format for me. <laughs> Remember there's one rehearsal that we had to reschedule because I read time zones wrong because we had someone in California on Pacific time. I was in central time. There was one of your New York friends on the East coast. Yeah. You know, like seven times in one email. So shout <laughs> out to Yvette for helping us schedule all of that because that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely like a battle to try and communicate with my actors from the east coast and i was like so it's 11 a.m your time which means 8 a.m my time they're like so 8 a.m my time and i was like no <laughs> like, <laughs> um but yeah so that was that was tricky but it was still really really fun to get to do wanda what about you well uh i i i think time time management but in a different way um, so I was very fortunate uh, to be able to work through um, a lot of the pandemic and different sort of stages of, of safety and hybrid, like hybridity. So what hybridity especially has taught me in particular about time management is um, I is sort of not to sweat the small stuff and maximize time with um uh, just with with expectation so i typically uh, run unless somebody requests something like leaving time for requests i typically run any digital rehearsal the same way um depending on the amount of rehearsal time if you have one to two rehearsals for something um or you have an hour one to two hours you get together you say hello you run the piece two to three times with notes in between and you leave a lot of ample time for questions and after two or three times if there's really nothing more to be done you leave and just leaving all of that uh, just sort of setting that expectation for myself as well as for other people that the that the expectation of time is on questions and comfort and nothing else and not needing to feel the need to pad the time the way you would in a different medium has been a saving grace for me uh, in any kind of digital platform and with these pieces especially. And after three um, times with this, um, I I've, I've feel like it was okay. I've, I feel like it went fine. I'd say it went more than fine. Episode two, both episodes were really good this year. I was really proud of the plays we end up going with and the work with everyone. Right. Thank and you. I, 
I want to add also that we need to say a thank you to our sound designer and editor and kind of everything all around man, <laughs> George Saras. Um, who underscores everything. He makes the music for all of Filament. Uh, so he put in a lot of work behind those episodes as well. So yay, George. <laughs> so we have a few of the playwrights here, as mentioned, they've introduced themselves. So a question I always wanna ask playwrights when it comes to Lights Up, since we switched it to a podcast, is did you write this play knowing it would be audio? Did you think here that there was an audio play festival and think, oh, I have a piece that could work audio, let me rewrite it? How does, because I feel like similar to directing on and off stage, writing for directing on and off stage has to be different. So if anyone wants to answer that, they can take the lead. Guy, I see Guy. Go ahead, Guy. Yeah, sure. Guy I'll, and Allie. I'll, I'll jump in. Um, my play was not written initially for audio, um, but I thought it could adapt quite easily to that format. Um, and it seems to me many other playwrights or, or uh, other people on the call can can also give their opinion on this. It seems to me that with the with the pandemic and with the rise of podcasting, those two things have come together, and the the, um, the radio play now it seems to have had a resurgence in popularity. So I'm seeing you know, more interest, more calls for, for radio plays, for, for um, the podcasting medium uh, coming out there. And so I'm more and more, I'm, I'm producing radio versions of my stage plays. So I am an actor as well as a writer and director, and I work in film and TV as well as stage and voiceover. So this was a cool way to kind of tie a bunch of those elements together. Uh, my piece was just originally written uh, as after a prompt. There was a prompt online that had that first sentence and the idea came to me pretty immediately. Uh, and I liked it fusing kind of a fantasy mythological element to it and how much of it are you taking with a grain of salt that it's this this girl that's just acting out but if you really listen uh hint hint especially to the line about the dad you realize that there might be something more to it uh so i also kept it really really short because i felt like that was more impactful to just kind of leave it as is it a cautionary tale is it a is it a midnight lullaby like what is going on here um and sometimes short and sweet is the way to go. Definitely your piece. Um, I remember when we were reading it, actually we have, um, apart from lights up on filament, we also do spooky lights, which is, is, is still accepting submissions by the way. <laughs> um, but we were reading it and you, that piece was one of the ones that we thought oh, you know, if it doesn't fit in for this, maybe it could move into that because it had that creepiness element to it. And it was just like, what's going on? There's mystery. Um, so it was really cool to be able to just incorporate it in either one of these <laughs> uh, programs that we have. Well, thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's such a haunting piece. It just really grabbed me. And I wanted to know what happened next. It was like a, a teaser for some kind of mini series. I hope to see that someday soon. From your mouth to somebody's ears, Rachel. That's Thank right, you. mini series, mini series. And always leave them wanting more, right? Exactly. Yeah. We were looking for a piece to work on like a cold open, kind of to start the episode with something to get people interested. And so that piece was one of those like, ooh, this will get, this could get folks intrigued. But then also with, on the opposite side of that with it's time to come out now it, that piece it just has so much heart in it that you it's not like scary spooky but it's just like oh this is i feel like we all were going like this on the zoom just like oh my gosh oh my gosh it's definitely that's something part. that we've all been feeling <laughs> yeah for sure and that's one of the things i love about lights up is the variety of pieces and it's something we think about when we're structuring the episodes is we can't just have an hour of sad, dramatic pieces because no one's going to want to listen to that. Which is something that I didn't think about 
when we first started doing things on a podcast, it was the flow of the entire series. It's like organizing an album and you want to have yeah. something that has no skips, but flows together, but doesn't sound um, repetitive or monotonous. So I mm -hmm. think y'all not navigated that terrain very well in, in both episodes. We had good works to choose from. Sure. Do any of the other playwrights want to talk about their piece and writing it for if they wrote it for audio, if they didn't write it for audio? Okay. Um, this is Russell Weeks writing Pippi, and I the only um, audio play I've ever written. And I saw your um, play. Uh, series announcement on NYC playwrights and I just thought I'd give it a shot. It's awesome. And Pippi was great because it was it felt like a cartoon. It was just silly and fun. And it, it worked for all of those. And, and it's real. It. It's real. My wife has a, a pet peeve with the grocery stores. So I good material to start with <laughs> i love that oh i gotta hear about some practical jokes that back you guys might have played on some local grocery stores that sounds fun <laughs> <laughs> i don't think we should do that we might get arrested. that's true <laughs> a little too real we don't want to get you in trouble uh, that's yeah thank you <laughs> And then Alethea, your piece was also just, it was like surreal. I imagined it very kind of dark and like spotlights. Like I, I can't help but imagine all of these, like if we were going to do them on stage and I just imagine a lot of, almost like a, I don't know. I kind of got a sense of like a touch of like film noir where like the spotlight is down on everybody and it just keeps getting more and more claustrophobic. Um, did you write the piece for this or, cause I, I kept thinking of like the, the theme of escape that we set for all of these pieces. And I was like, wow, this also really fits really well with that, that enclosing kind of feeling. So I actually wrote this piece uh, almost four years ago now. Um, and I wrote it as a response to my high school's not dealing with, there had been a, a recent um, suicide of a kid in my high school and the high school did not address it at all and so I kind of was poking you know at the way that they were handling or not handling um, mental health in my district and um, not giving support to kids who needed it and so the funny thing about that was that I submitted that to a local playwrights festival in high school and I got a letter from the principal like saying like, oh, congratulations on your on your play. And I was like, did you read it? Um, but yeah, so so I had I had workshopped it a bunch of times. And the one thing that was interesting to me was that was the laugh track, the way I did it differently. Sometimes I would like play it off a of, off a of tape and sometimes I would hold a sign that said laugh like to the audience and like have them laugh and I was like you have to laugh whenever I hold this sign up. Um, so that was always something that I was thinking could work really well in an audio play. And so I'm a student playwright. I check nycplaywrights.com blog, you know, on the weekly. And so I saw that the theme for this um, podcast was escape and I was like, oh, this works. So I sent it in and I think it was a good match. It just, I, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Just um, reading it, I just felt such a, a connection with, with poor Jason, you know, how trapped he was and how just like the world was closing in on him. You know, I think we've all felt like that, you know, especially when we're, young and under such those kinds of pressures and I thought you did such a great job of just having this character just feel alone and isolated while this crazy world was going on around them where they were you know where they were trying to like uh, speak to a narrative that actually wasn't real you know that did not match up with what was going on in this kid's mind so it was just beautifully done and 
very um it was like nerve-wracking and and kind of like uh heartbreaking at the same time and funny you know it had all of those elements i really enjoyed it i appreciate it yeah i i agree a lot with rachel there was that element of like nobody is listening to him and he's just crying out for help and nobody will pay attention so knowing what the background of like you writing this piece it makes a lot of sense and i uh, i really appreciate that you shared that with us as well um that portion too of like you mentioning that um holding up signs for the audience as soon as you said that i got a little chill i really like that as, a, as an idea because then it um then it makes sure that the audience gets involved. Like you're not a, you know, you're not just watching and passive. You can ignore what's going on. It makes the audience get involved. So I think it's pretty cool. Complicit. It like makes the audience kind of complicit in the whole thing, which is just like, yeah. Yeah. Like, and it also fits how when sitcoms are taped that you have to laugh and you're not allowed to laugh at something that you find funny that wasn't supposed to be a laugh line. Yeah, there's a there's a whole thing. If y'all have never been to a live taping, it's it's surreal in itself. And wow. it's about how things stop getting funny or if you don't find them funny, what that means as an audience member, what that means as the actor on stage and these poor, amazing stage hands that are trying to keep it all going at the same time. So, yeah, I think that's a really cool theatrical element. Wow. It becomes its own character in that way if you have the that person cast to just be holding up the signs and being like you have to laugh now Ooh. the pressure <laughs> so i have mentioned that one of my favorite things about lights up is the variety of pieces we get i think it's cool that within like one 40 minute episode i'll laugh i'll cry i'll go like this so I think that that's something really cool that we've always done with Lights Up. And so, Rachel, I want to talk to you. You've been doing Lights Up longer than I've been at City Lights, which isn't too long, but it sounds like a long time. So why, what keeps bringing you back to this new play, New Works Festival? Oh, I just think it's, it's like I get to be a witness to sort of the birth of all of this creativity from, you know, a playwright's new idea to having, you know, the directors and the actors work on something from kind of the ground up and seeing it grow and then and then maybe eventually seeing it, you know, where it goes from here. So it's I think it's just being involved in sort of the, the birthing of the creative process from all, you know, from all the different, you know, different perspectives. And like when we were doing it um, live, it was kind of like, I, I did enjoy kind of like, it, it felt like a party, you know, like we were all getting together for a little party and we'd experiment with different things in the in-person in person version, which was kind of fun because you have a little more freedom to like try out new things. Um, and then when we transferred it over to audio, it's like a, I'm learning a completely different animal. So I get, ex I'm, I'm, it's like I get exposed to this whole new medium that I'm still getting used to. So I think it's just the excitement of like new stuff, you know, from all angles. And of course, um, getting to uh, work with, you know, I, I think I worked more with the directors and the, and the playwrights um, more in the past than I am now, but it's great to see uh, Carol and, Yvette and all the other folks involved, like take this on and just like run with it. And, you know, and I still get to have a lot of fun with it and contribute, but it was just like, you know, just seeing the birth of this new medium and how you, the staff has really taken it, taken it on and turning it into something, you know, even more awesome is also a pleasure. So I don't know what I just said, but hopefully it made sense. That made sense. <laughs> and it's something that you're talking about that, resonates with me is that this past season we did the show waiting for next by jeffrey lowe which started as a lights up piece mm -hmm. if right. i'm remembering correctly at some point it was at lights yeah. up years ago yeah. and so yeah. watching that show go from a scene at lights up to a little bit more to a little bit more to finally making on our main stage show last year was 
was cool. So it's kind of fun to be like at the start of yeah, yeah. what we've seen have been steps. Exactly. Exactly. Thanks for the question. It's odd because it is such a different medium. And I remember when we first were talking about switching it over, um, even the first year where we were like in the middle of the planning stages and then suddenly everything had to shut down and we had to be like, well, we're not just gonna ignore all of these fantastic pieces that we'd already chosen. We should do something about it. And we were like, well, let's go back to the root of it. What is the most important part? that people listen to the story, right? And so then we were like, well, audio, just go back to audio, do the radio play thing and just hire some actors to still do the pieces and then put it out there into the world so that people can still get a chance to listen to these sometimes first drafts of these stories. And at that time, I know we were doing full plays. Like, I think we were doing, we had like five or six different plays, but it was like full, hour and a half, two hour plays that we were producing. Um, but it was just so interesting to be like, okay, what's the most important thing here? It's that these words get listened to and that the playwrights get their words out into the world. And, you know, hopefully people have ideas about them or any sort of like, any kind of new idea comes to the playwright about what they're like, you know what, that part didn't really work so well. Let me workshop it again. For sure. It's just like taking it back to its purest form, you know, the words themselves. And it just seems like the the podcast format and the, the vision for the, the the festival or the, you know, the New Works program is just a perfect fit. Mm -hmm. so I also is think, your feeling oh, now that you would continue this in the audio format going forward or are you tempted to go back to the in-person format? We've talked about both. We've talked about the possibility of maybe at some point trying to go back to in person, kind of see how that goes. Um, we did for this full season back, we just decided just as we are currently <laughs> just doing audio. Um, because at the end of the day, it ends up being um, a whole other production that we needed to remember was going to fit into our six show season. So then that would be show number seven. Um, but we completely didn't leave it off the table uh, for the possibility of going back to in person, maybe doing a hybrid thing where you do the actual shows in person for people, but still get audio and put it online so that people from all over the world can listen to it. Yeah, we found lots of pros of doing the podcast and with spooky lights is which is our halloween series is great as a podcast just listening to scary stories on halloween i love it so we have a question in the chat from rebecca and she asks did any of the playwrights here tonight get ideas for further revisions to their script after going through the lights up process Did listening to it make you think anything different of it? Did you want to change anything? Did it make you notice something you didn't notice before? What's it like listening to your pieces? Have you, was this the first time they had been, you had heard them? Okay, well, <laughs> I'll start again. Um, Thanks, Guy. So the um, I, I'd only heard it once before in a, um, a workshopping environment with a playwriting group that's based in Florida. That again, because of the pandemic, they'd opened it up, and I was able to participate in that. And they did a reading of it um, a few months ago, and that uh, led me to make some changes into the version that I sent to you. Um, and. Uh, as I said before, your your production of it was was wonderful. So I, I really enjoyed listening to it. I mean, you never know when when you tune into these things, is it going to be a pleasure or not? And it nearly always is. But, uh, and I re really enjoy what you did with it. Okay, I'll I'll jump in and say that. Um, 
I really appreciated the talent uh, and the sort of the nuance that the actors brought to the play. And I haven't revised it or sent it to anyone, but I'm considering incorporating it into a longer full-term play. And the insight I got in hearing it, I think will be helpful in making the changes to um, make the, the interaction between the characters a little bit crisper than I think it was originally written. If I could second what Russ said, I feel that um, hearing just the dialogue of, of my script really made me think about what I've written. Um, because my piece, there's a lot of like lights flickering and, and people doing weird things with their faces and holding people's heads up to face the audience. When you're just focusing on the words, um, I felt that each each word like had a different weight to it, and I think that there there would be some things that I might go back and change, um, so that so that those words can have more emphasis. It, it's 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 really great like to hear the talent like isolate just the text and to it also to create like it's like you're reading a book like to create your own. Um, picture of what's going on in your head uh, versus seeing it, which is something that you don't typically do in theater, but I think it's it's so fun. This guy, you have your hand raised. Yeah, I just wanted to add, add something. I, I also really appreciated the fact that they were so well rehearsed. <laughs> they were proper productions. Um, sometimes these audio things are just kind of cold reads and you don't get as much out of it as you would like to get out of it. So the fact that you did invest so much time in, in making it a full audio production with, as you said before, all of the sound effects that were done. And I, and I, you know, I also gather that you weren't all in the same space when you recorded it. <laughs> so you had that extra challenge and, and that was completely transparent uh, to, to, the, to the listener. So uh, the level of, of professionalism of the production was really, I really appreciated that. Yes, thank you again to everybody who did post-production on it because that's something that if you're doing live theater, you know, you, you always say like, it's in your hands now when it's the actors, like it's your turn, let's go, let's see what happens and every night's different. And as a performer, now you can do multiple takes. As a director, now you can go, okay, I'm going to use the first line Abby said, but I'm going to use the second take from Daniel, you know, and you can mix and match. So sometimes you have more options, but sometimes it can be overwhelming. Whereas in a live show, you just, you hit the floor running and you keep going and you drop a prop or you drop a line and you keep going. Um, also just the, the audio format involving um, a specific sense changes things you can't read people's body language you you don't see whether or not they turn away or change their face um as as you said before unless you're reading stage directions so if it's only text if it's pure text and that's all you're getting that's the story that's being told but sound design or sound effects or somebody's voice the timbre of their voice you still get a feel for what they're not saying you still get a feel for how they're feeling and, and the environment that they're in um, I also wanted to say that what's really cool about the theme of escape is that because it's portable, if you can hear it as you're walking down the street doing errands or somewhere else, a fictional podcast is an amazing way to escape. So anybody that likes audiobooks for that reason, this is similar to that where you're, uh, I've said it before, like, you know, you're, it's a sunny day, but you're listening to it's a rainy night in Cambodia in 1922 or whatever it is. And with a piece like this that keeps changing every couple of minutes, it's really neat because you're snacking on a ton of different flavors all in a row. But what does escape mean to you? And are you escaping just by listening? I, I really resonate with everything that everybody has said and I appreciate I appreciate everybody articulating these ideas so so succinctly and yeah I you know I what I have also discovered about this process of streamlining is that it is okay it's not blase to say 
that sounded good. And if everybody feels good about it, let's let it go. Because I think also with this medium, you can get, I think it's easier to get hung up because it's a, it's a one-off, you know, potentially on getting something exactly right. But being able to replicate as best as possible, the confidence of having rehearsed something and it being in the actor's hands for, for me as a director, uh, acknowledging the onus on my performers and the control on my performers is just saying questions are paramount, but if something sounded good and it felt fine, it's probably great. Let's not worry about it. That was something that as an actor in Lights Up as well, I really enjoyed with having Sarah as my director. She did a similar thing of, we'll run it once or twice. If you have questions, let's talk about it. But if we just read this four minute script over and over again for an hour, we're just gonna lose it. And the it's why would we do that? So it was, and Sarah made it clear from the beginning that we will rehearse it as long as we needed to. We have the time allotted, but we don't have to push it and use the time just because it's there. And I think the fact that we're getting so many great responses from our playwrights, from the people on filament and me listening to it, I'm really proud of it. I'm telling my friends, I'm sending them links. And I'm like, guys, this play's really cool. I think it turned out well. And we did, we did rehearse, we did take it seriously, but I wasn't exhausted by it. Yeah, I, uh, as like in all of my directing processes, I think I kind of overestimate the amount of time that I will need to get things done. So it was like, nice to have everybody kind of like all the actors were like whatever you think is good we think is good too and I, we all had that kind of understanding so it didn't take us the full hour to rehearse these five ten minute scripts um but i was really happy with the product either way and george was super helpful as well um in the recording process of being like that's not good to me because then that's an outside perspective too so it was kind of like a sneak preview of like how people would react to it rather than us just being like well this was kind of maybe we could do it again like da, 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 da. so yeah so what we did is that we recorded we rehearsed with our director one day and then another day whenever it was scheduled thank you Yvette, for scheduling that we would hop on Zencaster and record it with George and George would be hearing it for the first time. And so that's what Sarah was talking about with that fresh, fresh eyes, fresh eyes, fresh ears. We couldn't see each other. It was <laughs> podcast. And I know, I know from previous, like I've done previous recordings for other uh, plays that we've done. And since George is also an actor, like sometimes in the room, he'll be like, Ooh, actually, do you mind? Can you do that line again, but like do it like this or slow that part down a little bit more and we'll get that second take and it'll add a different layer to it. So that's pretty cool. And it's, uh, I'm glad to hear um, playwrights responses about how um, nice it is to hear the dialogue just in a different way. Cause I feel like, as you've said, we all focus so much in person on like all of the tiny blocking that you end up doing or all of the like sound cues, light cues, things that happen in the space, but then having just the words highlighted again, that was what was so important for us for all of this. And I'm glad that it is actually working out that way. I have a random question for the actors is, did you find any kind of freedom from like not having to like adjust to not having a script in your hand or was there like, uh, how was that, you know, being able to like look at your script as you're reading versus, you know, like rehearsing and learning lines and stuff like that? I can say for me, I, I enjoyed it because I didn't have to spend time memorizing lines. I could spend time working on the character and making sure I was pronouncing things correctly and getting into the story as opposed to being like, oh, but Am I going to remember to say this here or this here? So I had my microphone right here and I was just reading on the screen. So it was kind of nice to have that. And it was, I think something that people have been saying that I'm going to echo is that while this is a very different medium from being on a stage, it's beautiful in its own way. 
And I know that for me, especially in, so I was in Pippi and then I was also in Love from Space. And those are two plays that Pippi, I think, could be physically very funny. And Love from Space is like a dystopic future. So how, with Pippi, I'm a very physical person. It's like, how do I be funny just by saying these already funny things without all of this? And then with Love from Space, it was how do I show this relationship with this person who's my sister and this fear, but this connection and this love without being able to actually hug her and put my head on her shoulder. And it's all in the words, which I think is what we keep coming back to and what's so important about switching it to a podcast medium, something that everyone is learning is that Pippi is funny in the script itself. Trust it, the words are funny, it will be funny. Love from Space, it is heartfelt in itself if you just trust the script trust the story I don't need to put my arm around someone and put my head on them to show that there's that affection and that care it's it's all in the words it's in the story which I think is cool and it kind of brought me back to I haven't performed on stage since before the pandemic 2019 I think was the last time so it was just kind of a reminder of go back to the script. It's all in the words. It was kind of a fresh freshness. And trusting yourself. Trusting yourself when you can't be doing the physical comedy or the big rolling of the eyes or a funny, you know, a funny prop. Um, Love from Space, just want to give that a shout out because it felt like a tear-stained letter. That script, I felt like I got dropped into a memory. And I know it was happening, but it felt like reliving that moment and... uh, I just wanted to say that too. But as a, as a voiceover actor, I think the difference of some of these pieces were that the stage directions were read for some of them and some of them weren't, some of them had special effects and some of them didn't. So that was probably each individual uh, director's decision, but it is different if it is a fully immersive audio or a stage reading with it or a stage direction reading it, it they all have different um places and they all have different feelings and i know as a voiceover actress myself you have to trust yourself and you have to trust the words because it's really easy to overdo it or to tire yourself out like you said too many rehearsals all that kind of stuff but timing is important for me i usually have to slow down a little bit because i normally talk very very quickly i'm being very mindful of that you know that sort of thing unless that's what needs to happen and i think sometimes for some people the easiest thing in the world is substitution especially if you're recording lines separately and you don't have a group audio going on you're not in the same recording studio and you're only doing your lines think of who you're talking to and if you've never met that actor or you don't have a true big feeling for that character it's also great for auditions then okay then that is your sister or that is your friend or that is how would you feel in that situation and then just talk to them if it's a dialogue piece just talk to them just it's that whole thing of like uh real circumstances and real consequences in an imagined form and for this it's heightened because it's sound only but maybe someday you're going to do a piece that's mos and you do you do a commercial where you don't have any dialogue and it's only the narrator giving you all those feelings or you're doing something stylistic so all of those things are really amazing choices and challenges. And I, I strongly recommend actors and writers and directors to dip their feet into the different fields and to know when a script does or doesn't work in a medium, to know when you have to pull back and go, this is a great script, but by putting it in audio, we're actually taking away a lot of the vibrancy. We're taking away stuff. Other times you go, actually, I know I started it as a film, but it would be better on stage because of the live element. Don't be afraid, don't throw your script away because the first place you tried it out it didn't work. Think about where else it might might end up. And uh, and again, trust your actors, trust your directors. See what happens next. I so much with that last bit that you said about like some plays working very well for some mediums and translating to you know one or the other really well. And other times you look at a script and we you know we get so many scripts that sometimes you're like I love this but we would not do it justice, just an audio format. And sometimes you just have to let it go because you are like, we're, it's just, it needs that extra element sometimes of having the people in the room 
and being able to actually have that fourth wall kind of element with people. But yeah, I, I agree about that completely. So that's definitely something we think about when we're deciding which plays to actually produce into the festival is this, like Yvette said, it could be a wonderful script, but if it has a bunch of visual things, it just won't work on a podcast and it won't do it justice. And we wanna make sure that we can do, if we're gonna do some, a play at City Lights, we're gonna do it right. That's for sure about City Lights. Okay. And we'll also give a shout out to Rachel for coming up with our theme of escape this year. I remember we were in a meeting talking about if we wanted to do a theme this year, if we did it. She said, oh no, like let's brainstorm. What are some like good words and good ideas, things people can relate to? I don't know, maybe escape. And I just remember all of us like sat and said, we're done brainstorming. We have our theme. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> it was so fast. <laughs> It was a quick meeting, in and out. Escape is a favorite theme of mine. I mean, what's not to love, you know? And I liked it because it worked in so many ways with so many of the different plays. It, it, yeah. it as a theme, it could fit so many things. Yeah, exactly. Escape can be almost anything. Escape from yourself, escape from a location, escape from a thought, um, escape from a planet. Escape from a giant sea monster. Yes. <laughs> Another <Exactly>. monster. <laughs> Midnight. Oh, that was a good one. Yeah. Shout sure. out to Lynn. <laughs> that was, I actually could not, I, I wanted to breathe for them when, when I was reading that, like, but being trapped underwater is such a scary thing mm -hmm. for sure yeah that was that was one of those that I was like oh god and shout out to those actors because and the playwright because yeah you you're just feeling for them and then you know spoilers doesn't end well Chills. and I was outside in 105 degree heat you know outside in broad daylight and I felt submerged. I didn't feel cool, I wish, but it was, I felt I felt trapped and I was in this open space. And it, again, it's theater or any storytelling, book, a music, film, what, anything that it is can be so transformative and you escape, but then in that moment, you, you're trying to help them. So in that one, I was like, I, it's the equivalent of wanting to pound on doors or call 911 or for somebody, and you know it's fictional, but in the moment, you're so absolutely um, intrigued by it and, and, and immersed in it, even if it is this wildly fantastical or sci-fi or futuristic or something like that, you get so intrigued by it. And that's true connection over, in this case, over just hearing it through your headphones. Um, actors that were all over the world, playwrights that were all over the world, that if this had been cast in different countries or different states, you wouldn't have played sisters or you wouldn't have known each other or all that kind of stuff. So thank you again to technology for bringing people together. And thank you to all the writers for their imaginations for doing this and to all the actors for bringing the stories to life. Thank you to everyone. It's just about time. And I want to be respectful of people's time, especially because as mentioned, we are all over the place right now, which is a cool thing, but also I want to acknowledge it. So um, thank you for joining us. I'm sure most of the people here know this, but the Lights Up episodes are on filament. Give them a listen. And we are accepting submissions for Spooky Lights, which is our Halloween series. And that's just anything spooky, anything Halloween, anything you would tell your friends around a campfire kind of thing. If you have real stories, I'm always super interested in those. <laughs> it's we, true. We do love the true stories. <laughs> we have had Ooh. people send in their own experiences, and that was really cool. Um, so if you have any of those, know anybody who has any of those, we can also read in Spanish. I speak Spanish. Other people do as well. <laughs> so if you know anybody who has any of those, or if you all have any of those, please send them in. Yeah, we had a piece... Yvette wrote it in Spooky Lights last year, I think, maybe, that was written 
in maybe two years ago, I can't remember, it was presented in English and then immediately again in Spanish, which was really cool. I did. I wrote, I wrote a piece based off of like an old story that I'd heard um, from my mom. And then I just started researching it. And then I was like, oh, there's actually more to this that other people have like talked about in different countries too. So let me just write a little fictional story about it. And then I thought, I speak Spanish. I can translate this into Spanish. Why don't I just do that? And so it helped me connect my own writing and like that kind of cool spooky stuff with my own family in Mexico. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's awesome. I bet they love the story. Yeah, it was nice to finally be able to tell some of my family who only speak Spanish, hey, there's a thing I did that's theater related. Go yeah. Listen. So cool. Um, and then since we're announcing or reminding people of certain things, since we are connected to City Lights Theater Company, we are part of a larger theater company. Uh, City Lights is a, almost about to open our first show of the 2022-2023 season, Every Brilliant Thing. Uh, opening, um, our, well, opening night is the 17th of this month and it runs until I believe the 18th of October. Rebecca, Carol, I am like just double checking. It runs for a pretty nice long span of time. So it's like 16th or 17th, whichever one the Sunday is. I can't remember. It's the Sunday. <laughs> it looks like October 16th. 16th. I'm just reading it in chat. And there has been some discussion in the chat about accessibility and how actors, disabled actors, could do things like Lights Up, which is cool. And maybe we could provide transcripts for our audience. And every brilliant thing is presented as a bilingual production in English and American Sign Language which is really cool. So it kind of connects to that. Yeah. So unless anyone has any final questions that are dying to ask. I don't think so. I think we're good. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. I had fun. Thank you playwrights for giving us your words. I really enjoyed lighting us up this year and we'll see you next time. Thanks everyone. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.